Well, 90 percent of American Catholics say a married mother and father make ideal parents, this according to a new Pew study. But large majorities of Catholics here in the U.S. think other family configurations are also acceptable. Eighty-four percent of Catholics surveyed say it's acceptable for unmarried parents living together to bring up children. And two-thirds of American Catholics think it's acceptable for same-sex couples to raise children. This new data is released today in the wake of the recent U.S. Supreme Court decision legally redefining marriage. We asked Princeton University professor Dr. Robert George if the battle for marriage is lost. Oh no, the debate's certainly not over uh, any more than the debate over abortion was over when the Supreme Court handed down its uh, dreadful decision in 1973 in Roe versus Wade. Now, a lot of people at that time thought the debate was over. The New York Times said that the Supreme Court has settled the abortion issue. But here we are 40 plus years later and nothing is less settled in American politics than the question of abortion. More people are pro-life than ever. Younger people are more pro-life than uh, older people. We're enacting some very significant um, protections for unborn children. We're still not where we need to be, of course, and we still haven't gotten that horrible decision overturned, but we're very much making progress, and I think the same will be true uh, with respect to marriage. We're going to keep working on this. We're going to try to restore the conjugal understanding of marriage as the union of husband and wife. But there are people who are standing up, like Kim Davis in, uh, Kentucky. in Kentucky, where she's saying, I will not issue these licenses. Does she have any legal recourse now that the courts have ruled against her? Well, the, I think the way this should be handled at this stage is that we need to give significant weight to religious liberty objections so that if people are not able in conscience to issue same-sex marriage licenses or licenses to same-sex uh, partners, they should be given every opportunity to step aside from doing that if there's someone else in the office who's able to do it or some other mechanism for uh, doing it. We certainly shouldn't simply require in defiance of conscience that anybody anywhere op op operating under uh, a, a public mandate should be forced to uh, uh, implicate themselves in same-sex so-called marriages. Do you see any indication that we might see some religious liberty protection in all this? Yes, uh, there are, uh, there's legislation that's pending both at the national level in Congress and in the state legislatures. Uh, the approach that I myself think is the most promising and important and urgent right now is called the First Amendment Defense Acts. And again, we have them at the federal level and at the state uh, level. These acts would prevent any discrimination on the basis of someone's belief in marriage as the conjugal union of husband and wife. That's one way to push back against this effort to crush all dissent now that the people who wanted to redefine marriage have gotten the Supreme Court to go their way. We need politicians who will say, no, the Supreme Court has overstepped its bounds. This is an anti-constitutional decision, and I will not treat it as if it's the law of the land. The story is not over. Dr. Robert George from Princeton, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you.